and welcome to another edition of Health Solutions with Sean and Janet Needham, where Team Needham discusses everything healthcare. I'm your host, Sean Needham, and uh, we I am streaming live from downtown Portland, Idaho today. Anyway, it's beautiful out, and I am headed out for a bike ride later today, um, and just enjoying enjoying this fall weather. I love season changes. Um, and uh, anyway, so today on our show, we have Matt Ort on our show, and he is going to talk about employer-sponsored health care and how he can make it affordable and better. So if you are self-employed or you know anybody that's self-employed and you are paying for employees' health care, you do not want to miss out on this show because he is going to show you, if you're a big employer, he is going to show you how to save literally, listen to this, millions of dollars. And that might be hard to believe, but he is going to share some stories, some great stories of how he's done that. And he's going to talk a little bit about, um, you know, non-traditional stuff, um, because I think in this healthcare environment, we really have to get out of the box and stop doing the traditional stuff. The Premier Blue Crosses, the United Healthcare's. All those companies, they run the show and they are in collusion, literally, literally with hospitals to create a high price environment. It doesn't have to be that way. And Matt is going to show us how, what he did and how he did it. So Matt, welcome to the show. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, thanks for having me this morning and good morning, everyone. I'm, I have probably a unique and interesting perspective of, of the employer side. So. Uh, whether you're an employer or even an employee, it'll give you something to maybe ask your HR or your CFO or your president or your CEO about as well. There, there are things that you can do that we can do to actually play this game well. And probably the worst thing and the most common thing I see is that people don't know what to do or companies don't know what to do or they, or they end up doing nothing or they do things that have very little impact. So that's kind of been my passion is to make a difference, make a difference and get in front of employees each year and give them good news and not have tomatoes thrown at me for <laughs> 20, 20 years in a row that healthcare costs have gone up 9% in our great country. And so that's no fun. So I've, I've uh, wanted to give them good news. Yeah, and, and thank you for sharing the part that, um, you know, employees need to see this too, because, you know, employers are the ones, employees are the ones that are getting the benefit and literally, I think in some ways, this has to come from the bottom down, not the top up. So employees need to demand better service at a better price um, because they're the ones that are, that, are, that are getting the benefit. So, yes, it's important that anybody that is affected by any kind of healthcare plan watches this show. So thanks for sharing that, Matt. Yeah, and I, you know, I think uh, sometimes HR people often, you know, Healthcare, uh, healthcare is often, uh, almost always, an employer's second or third largest expense, and so it's it's very interesting and ironic to me, right? So uh, companies will manage per, uh, purchasing of of ink pens down to a nickel, you know, down to the penny even, and but somehow healthcare, for whatever reason or reasons it seems to get neglected. Maybe it's a, a feeling like there's nothing we can do or this is our employee's health and somehow we would never sacrifice that. And that's not a bad thought, but the, there are many things. So if you look at, uh, in one example, we saved over $5 million in a little over four years. We added a whole bunch of benefits. So this notion that you have to like cut things to save money or cut services or cut quality we did all the opposite. We increased quality, we increased services, and we can talk about some of those details. But just the point that it's not a takeaway. Uh, we got in front of, of employees five years in a row and said, uh, your premiums are either lowering or staying the same, first of all. Like, that's what everybody wants to hear. Like, how much is, how much is this gonna impact my paycheck? You know, is my, is my raise gone or more, or even more, right? Like, uh, so those are, those are bad stories, and so, all that's avoidable if you know doing the right things so i should have had you introduce yourself at uh, first the show i apologize for that so tell us a little bit about your background and history yeah uh so i had an interesting childhood my parents divorced when i was three and i was back and forth between the top of illinois and a farm in central iowa so i i always joke you know change doesn't scare me you know if you're 
if you're seeing a lot of things at that young of an age, it's change has always been fun for me, uh, problem solving, spent a lot of time on Iowa farm. So I'm very uh, down to earth and uh, very hands on and not, you know, not afraid to jump into something new. Uh, so I had a, a 20 plus year professional career. I actually started out with a after grad school with a, a Toyota supplier, and then I was recruited to Toyota. So that had a, a big 8,000 uh, team member plant in Kentucky that made 3,000 cars every 24 hours. So talk about high volume. Um, 3,000 cars every day? Can you believe that? Yeah, Camry was the best selling car, so they couldn't make enough of them. Unreal. Um, so great cars. Uh, but I, I learned just a ton of things at Toyota. Root cause problem solving is something I carry with, with me today. And believe it or not, it helps with teenagers and it helps with healthcare. And uh, so progressing just recently, I was the vice president of, of HR and health and medical services at Merrill, a company called Merrill Steel in central Wisconsin. And it's kind of funny to me, you know, the first what, uh, whatever, roughly 20 years of my career, uh, and, and, and this is a, a point for employers or HR, if you're hearing this or anyone, I didn't like healthcare. I, I thought it was boring. Um, it was just kind of a nuisance. You know, I knew the basics, but I, I didn't, it wasn't anything special to me. We just kind of got through the enrollment and we moved on. That was always about culture and leadership and things like that. And I just ran some graphs. I started looking at the healthcare costs and I about fell out of my chair. Um, Sean had mentioned the huge dollars. You know, when I think one of the things I told the owners from the start, it, when we're talking healthcare, it depends, it depends on the size of the company, right? But when we're talking healthcare, we're not talking in thousand dollar increments or ten thousand dollar increments. We're talking in one hundred thousand dollar increments. So maybe some of the stories I'll share today are examples. It, I always joke like it sounds like I'm making up numbers. It sounds like I'm just horrible liar or exaggerator, and I'm. I'm not. Um, those are, you know, real numbers kinds of things. But that's just where healthcare has gotten today. Is it feels like we're like playing Monopoly or something, and say, oh, that we saved 150 grand by this. You know, I always joke, fifty thousand dollar phone calls. Literally, like I made a phone call, I just saved fifty grand. <laughs> you know, I don't know any. I don't know how you do that in purchasing when you, you know, you buy pencils for a nickel each less. You know, I, I mean, because all those avenues have been uh, belabored. And healthcare is a frontier. So if you like fun, if you like challenge, like me, I see. I don't see a problem. I see an opportunity, and so that's fun for me. And so that's why healthcare is one area that I've had success in. So let's back up just a little bit, if you don't mind. Um, so why do you think that is? I, you know, you, you mentioned purchasing. So as a selling pens or pencils or whatever analogy you want to use. You could never pick up the phone and save fifty thousand dollars with one phone call like that. No, um, but no. you can with healthcare, and it sounds like you can do it in multiple areas. So, in you know, in multiple areas of healthcare. So, can you explain that? Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, and I've got some some good stories that I can lead into here. One one about MRIs, for instance. Let me lead with this before I go there. You know, the one of the first things is that employers just realize that, and that employers take action because employers. You had indicated employers are about half of the uh, pay about half of the medical costs in this nation. That's shared with employees, by the way. So if you're an employee and you're not uh, HR or something like that or a CEO I and mean, you're just listening as an employee, uh, we are paying 10 to 20 percent of that as well. So you have a stake in this game. So right. until we act, see, I, I always joke and I uh, the funny analogy, right, there's there's a group of businesses or entities that are that are what we would call traditional healthcare, and it includes potentially brokers hospital systems insurance companies or acting as tpas third-party administrators to process the claims etc they're riding a gravy train with biscuit wheels as the joke joke is right so um if you were riding a gravy train with biscuit wheels would you jump off right you know, I mean, if there was an ethical issue, you should, and there are some ethical issues. Right. Uh, but I think one of the things we as people, we can justify about anything, right? So we run into this little little ethical issue, but you know, that's my livelihood, by the way. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna rationalize it. So I think if you're a broker listening or others, um, be careful, right? Be careful because 
there is a right and a wrong, and and um, sometimes we can rationalize things, um, and make maybe what isn't right so isn't right sound right. So I think you know one of the things that if every player in the in this game plays ethically and well, then it probably doesn't turn into uh, Animal Farm as I like to use as an analogy. So I don't know if Sean, you've read Animal Farm, but it's an old uh, George Orwell book. Yeah. But it basically says things start out with great intent and and then I'll say, then they go animal farm, right? They go, they go bad. Um, uh, healthcare is one of those, right? Healthcare started out probably just fine. And then it, then it just turns sour. Money gets in the way, the love of money and greed and everything else uh, ruins it. So one of the themes, you know, the biggest, the biggest theme that I promote when I would get in front of and do get in front of employees, and I'll lead this into my MRI story that I'm keeping you hanging on here. Love uh, it is uh, is the ability to shop right so in, in every other industry at least in a capitalist society like america um it's my opinion and many's that and uh, opinions that capitalism free market if you will uh creates healthy competition and creates healthy quality right so almost every business in america right um if we don't perform if we don't have good quality and keep our costs down where we can sell a product or service at a competitive cost, guess what? We don't sell anything and we risk going out of business. The government, which which is always picked on and probably deservedly so, right, for DMVs or whatever it may be, is, isn't in those shoes. Um, healthcare, I would argue, although it, it seems like they should be, isn't uh, in those shoes. And so that creates a real problem. And some of that non-competition, if you will, they've created. So one of the themes, the theme is free market. So what I like to explain to employees is we have to be able to shop for healthcare. And that just means like you go on Amazon, for instance, I try to shop local. Um, but if you go on Amazon and you look at cost and you look at stars, right? Those stars are actually meaningful. Those are people's actual reviews. Those aren't some game or paid thing that, right? So you can tell, you can go on Amazon in like less than 30 seconds. Boom, 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 click, click, got it. Good, I'm moving on with my life. Um, again, I try to buy local, but, but that's a great example of shopping effectively. So if we think about it, so if you're human resources or if you're someone CFO in charge of healthcare, let me tell you this, let me tell you, let me give you a quick, this is something I realized like two years into this journey, by the way, this is, these are not all things I've known for many years. You, you learn little nuggets along the way. If you sign up for a narrow network, it seems really great on the surface, right? I get uh, if by going narrow, by going exclusive, in other words, here's the trick. I'm signing away my ability to shop. Uh, hint, don't do that. I'm signing away my ability to shop. I'll save 40% or 50%, right? It sounds really good. And maybe there are rare cases where it is, but I'll tell you this. Um, in healthcare, I don't think it's good because what it's doing is you're signing away your ability to shop. It's shutting down the free market. And, and I would ask even this, okay, let's say it's 50%. Many times hospital systems, we have hospital systems in Wisconsin, one of the worst states for healthcare that have raised their rates so much that they call their standard rate 800% of Medicare. That's 800, that's their standard, right? So if they're a nonprofit, by the way, and then they charge less, well, then they, they can write all that off. See, that was all stuff we gave away. But that's a made up number. So, but even then, uh, call a hospital and ask how much for a knee surgery. They'll say it's too complicated. We know that's false. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so let's say that's let's say that's discounted fifty percent, right? But fifty percent off of what? We don't know the prices anyway. The only way we know prices is by looking back at medical records, HIPAA, HIPAA people only, right? But looking back, so that so but fifty percent off an imaginary number. It's like going on to a car lot and buying a you want let's say you want to buy a black Chevy truck, and and you look. And you and the window tint's too dark, you can't even see the number, but the salesperson comes up and says, I'll give you 50% off of this truck today. Now, all of us would be like, that's amazing. But if we're smart, our next question should be, uh, what was that price again, <laughs> right? right? Oh, this truck's 100 grand, <laughs> right? right? Uh, so, so it's just games, right? And I, I know from people that have worked next to CEOs or head of hospitals and that those kinds of things are talked about, all sorts of money-making things are talked about that would really disturb, I won't get into those, but really disturb us if we were to hear about how primary care is used as a funnel or ER is used as a funnel. And 
it's focused on money instead of healthcare. No, and right, every entity needs to make a profit or make, you know, sustain, don't get me wrong, that's fine. But we're talking about great abuse of the systems. So I'll give you uh, the fun, uh, I've got many, but the fun MRI story. So at Merrill Steel, we, uh, and many companies are doing this, there's a new one popping up uh, just actually from the MRI company, but uh, at least in the Midwest, and I think many areas, if you've ever seen one of those big semis, they say MRI scanner on the side and whatever it may, whatever the label may be, but they're well known. So there's semis that drive around and they have a modern wide bore MRI machine in there, probably something like a $3 million machine, right? That hospitals don't want to invest in or others. So these companies are, are traveling around. They'll, they'll park at a hospital system and they'll plug into a 480. They'll park usually hospital systems is where they park. So, but we, um, one of the things I did is we had, I had talked to the Alliance, which is a, a co-op in Wisconsin with over a hundred thousand members. They're not for profit. And I said, can you share with me like the top five to seven healthcare costs? Right. So, because if I can interrupt those, I prefer that word over disrupt. Disrupt sounds like I'm a troublemaker. <laughs> although people call me that. I don't, yeah, I don't consider myself a troublemaker, but I do like to interrupt those chains. Um, so we, we said, okay, down the line, okay, primary care, first of all, if you, if you haven't considered a DPC, uh, that's a way to interrupt that funnel because that's the way it catches everything. Well, the very number one cost, if you don't count pharmacy, but the very number one cost is imaging. So we said, okay, well, how can we interrupt this chain of, of imaging? So we know that in a system, if that, uh, we, so we put in a 480 right at, right by our front door and we have this big MRI scanner truck pull up and plug in, very simple, it cost us, I think, 14,000 to put in the plug and run the line, it's heavy, heavy line, but one time cost, one time, that's it, we're done. Had a couple of phone lines and so forth uh, to their spec, uh, but they would pull up to the door and basically the cost they would charge us for that MRI is $400. And so we as a company would subsidize that and the, the uh, employee or the, or the member would pay $100, right? Not bad, not bad. So. And that was to get them to use it, but it's a win-win. It's a win-win. I was sitting in the corner office once with an owner and, and the president and the truck pulled right up, you know, and they just park at the curb. And um, I said, every time that truck pulls up, we and employees save like almost four, you know, around $4,000. He smiled and he's like, I like that, right? So that's yeah. not a $50,000 phone call, but that truck pulls up once a week, right? That's, that's adding up. So the person would get the MRI. That includes the read, by the way. And so, but interesting, so that driver who's the tech gets back in that truck, drives, in that case, 15 minutes north, jumps on the little four lane, exits, goes to the hospital system, backs up to their plug-in, to the hospital system's plug-in, and, and they, a little better, they make it look like, um, you know, it's another room. Uh, they don't have the little lift like we have, but it's the same truck, same driver, same machine, same everything. And... If I were to go get an MRI there, I would pay anywhere on the higher side, typically, but three to four to even five or six thousand dollars. I have the receipts to prove it. Now, the only way I know that is from receipts from bills paid, right? Because they don't tell you. It's just not in the hospital's way uh, to tell you the price. You go into a store, there's a menu. You go to the truck lot, even though it's an exaggerated MSRP, you still have one. You have a starting point. Uh, we don't get that privilege with hospital systems. And that's, there's, there's, a, there's executive orders and things trying to fix that, but not fast enough. Yeah, I, that's one of the big problems that you are alluding to is lack of transparency. I mean, there's just not transparent pricing and that's gotta be a problem because you can't shop for healthcare mm -hmm. if there's not transparent pricing. So guess what? The hospitals that are charging 10, eight to 10 times what they should be charging, they love it. Yeah, it, you know, it's it's just like blinders on. So you're exactly right. It shuts off the shopping game, uh, which is to our, everyone's advantage. It also encourages higher quality and lower prices. And if all that gets shut down, and hospital systems monopolize areas, um, then there's even without transparency, there's less competition. And you could even follow that with kind of the follow up story. Let's say. Uh, and I, I've been, I've been in these shoes. I went down to Oklahoma a couple months ago and got my shoulder cleaned up in a surgery uh, with Keith Smith and Steve Lantier and their yeah. great team. Um, so I, I had been down there before and got to know them, and I thought, well, perfect. Uh, 
So I'll go through that. But so I, I get my MRI and I get the read and I, of course, help in interpreting, interpreting what it says and work with the right surgeons and so forth. And it was, this was very minor in my case, but it can be a knee replacement. It can be a hip replacement. So then, right. So we, by the way, so let me jump back one second. So interrupting is a word I use. Uh, we've interrupted that. We, in that case, we had on-site clinic or what's called typically DPC, direct primary care. That's, that's not a huge money maker for systems, but that's their funnel. Uh, because right. What happens when you get in, if you go and nothing wrong with going to a system for primary care, but there is something wrong. Maybe after that is you get refer, 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 mm -hmm. and, um, refer to very expensive things like $5,000 MRIs. Now, uh, let's say I need surgery minor major doesn't matter right um so the, what do we do when the white person in the white coat tells us right there's research on this there's some interesting studies about uh, mcgregor i think it was mcgregor i forget i have some books on this but obedience or and we listen to the white coat and um so um when the white coat says we need an x-ray what do we do now maybe there's a one percent chance we need an x-ray whatever it may be we tend to listen so this interruption of primary care and we're not, by the way we never forced anything we gave choices we say if you go here it's this amount if you go here this amount if you go here we might even give you some money right because that's how much the company's saving when the company saves you in um, in this case we've interrupted the primary care we've interrupted the imaging and next is surgery so if you've heard of a term called bundling um, it's funny, we have to have terms for this, um, but bundling would be one is uh, a surgery center, such as a surgery center of Oklahoma. There's many good ones in Wisconsin, one called OSMS in Green Bay, uh, but they'll actually tell you the price. Imagine that. I mean, what an amazing concept. Right. Um, and, oh, right. <laughs> and, and how silly does that sound, right? Uh, <laughs> but you can go to the surgery center of Oklahoma or SCO. Uh, you can do the search for the website. They were the first ones. They started this 20 years ago. They went fully transparent roughly 10 years ago. They haven't changed their prices, is my understanding, or at least most of them in 20 years. And they're about 25% or less of the rest of, especially systems, with some of the best surgeons. The one that did my shoulder, I think, had worked on Olympic athletes. And I used to be athletic, and I'm just an, just an old guy now. So, uh, But that's the kind of quality that we're talking about. Right. But imagine it. And I used to be at many years ago, I used to be a contractor while I was going to school and graduate school. But imagine you need a, a roof. Let's say your roof is leaking or just worn out and a contractor pulls up. Right. There are expectations there that we all have that we would we would say if we don't get those expectations, we would say you're smoking something. Right. Such as what's the quote for my roof? <laughs> right. Um, right. So if we wouldn't get that, we'd be mad and we would what would we do? alternative in shopping, we would call someone else. We had that choice. Healthcare, all that's removed. Uh, but if I want to rip it, I don't want the contractor to say, well, each shingle is $4.29. Uh, even if they tell you this, right, each nail is like uh, four cents. And then, you know, like all these things, right? We don't even want it. We just say, what's the price to what's like, the final price? <laughs> yeah, imagine that. So that's a bundle, right? So we, we live in bundles, uh, automotive, right? Same thing. How much to fix my car? Tell me what you're fixing, but how much to fix my car? And there, we have consumer protection laws in Wisconsin that protect us from all that. They're, they can get big trouble if they don't give us a quote. Even there's a federal law for funerals that even tell you all this stuff. So the joke is that the dead are more protected than the those seeking the living seeking health care. Right. Um, but so so simply put, so SCO gives you a bundle. They say here's how much for the surgery. It's you even guarantee it. And so if you needed some help later or something, it would be included. It even includes 10 physical therapy visits and things like that. Um, so that would be a known price. So we know what we're shopping for. We can evaluate the quality. And, and then that would, you know, so now we've interrupted the first highest cost. By the way, if that's the biggest money maker for the system, guess who's paying it? Well, that's our biggest, one of our biggest costs as well. The same for orthopedic surgery. So we've interrupted that and we just one of the strategies we took is we just keep going, going down the line. Um, and if you're curious, the next ones are the next ones oncology or cancer care. That's a little harder to interrupt because yeah. of the infusions and things like that. The next one's cardiology. That's another harder one to uh, interrupt. But there are surgery centers like the Surgery Center of Oklahoma 
uh, and there are many, so I don't want to just promote them, but they're one of the first. They're the pioneers. There's a new one popping up in Indiana. I believe it's called Wellbridge, but it hasn't even opened yet. But with the same concept, concepts of, and, and over 300 people, by the way, fly into Oklahoma from all over the world and they pay cash. They don't even accept insurance or they'll accept direct payments from companies on self-insured. So the oncology, cardiology, and then NICU would be number five, NICU events with pre, uh, premature babies. Those are all lower frequency, but when you get one, you might have 100,000 or 200,000 or even more, right? So a little harder to interrupt, um, but it can be done. So would you go over those in a list again, the top five healthcare sure. costs? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so pharmacy would be in there as well. Pharmacy is kind of a different game, and I enjoyed it. I watched one of your podcasts on pharmacy and, and how that and how you have even chains of shutting off the free market again. Um, but yeah, so number one, so when we did our research, number one is imaging. So that um, we did, now we did x-rays for free in our clinic. Um, so not all clinics can do that, but you know, x-rays, CT scans, PET scans, especially MRIs, I think are the most common. Uh, so that would be the number one, right? So get a picture, find out what's, what's wrong or if anything's wrong, it makes sense. And then number two would be orthopedic surgeries. So joints. But any kind of orthopedic surgery would be the number two cost. Those are huge money makers. And if you don't interrupt it, it um, when the person goes into the system, one, they're going to pay more. And, and then the, typically self-insured is my game, right? The company or the insurance company is going to pay more. Number three is oncology or cancer care, right? So all sorts of things there. That's that's a, And then there's also what we call complex case management. There are companies to help um, manage that. Uh, excuse me. So, uh, so you want to have those partners and diabetes or whatever it may be and dig into those. Number four is cardiology. So, uh, one of the things, if, if it's emergent, uh, pretty tough to interrupt, pretty tough to give options. When I say interrupt, I really mean give choices to employees or members, give choices and give, and give maybe those costs vary. If, if the company pays more, everybody pays more than the member. If the company's saving, right, and then evaluate quality and make sure it's good. Uh, so if it's emergent, that's that's kind of like the primary care. Well, they get in the funnel, and then they'll, um, you know, they could they could get into a really bad situation. Um, emergency care is a form of that. But if it's non-emergent, um, many many surgery centers around the country, SCO does all types of surgery. They do surgeries that many don't do, like spine, brain, uh, heart, etc. So. If it, and, and, and look at their prices, I think you'll be amazed. Uh, we talked about the referral, right? So in, in our case, in central Wisconsin, take a hip replacement. Uh, we, if we have, we've had hip replacements as much as $80,000 to have in the systems. Um, and if we, and we could send them to an independent, say over in Green Bay, and, and that surgery is around 25, or we could even send, the, and this is all their choice, again, no forcing, but they could go to Oklahoma, and I, I think you look it up, it's like 15995 or something like that. Same surgeries. So you, even if you look at different systems, you see many very uh, variations in price, huge variations in price for the same exact surgery. So that's that's a case where I'd smile, and we'd say, we just say $50,000. The member is really happy because they just got a great surgery, right? And everybody wins. And they maybe they even got money to do it. They, had, they didn't even have to pay. So... It's always win-wins. It's not looking for win-loses. Um, if anybody loses, it's the ones that are abusing the, the system and collecting too much money. But everybody, you know, the, the member, the person getting care and the person paying for care gets what they're supposed to. They shopped well and they got good care. So am I correct in the numbers that you said about the MRI? I don't know if we said it on the show, but you said the MRI alone saved $5 million in four years. Is that correct? No, no, all of the healthcare initiatives oh, that okay. we had, yeah. MRI was a part of that. Okay, so yep. can, so basically the way you save $5 million in four years is through all these these top five things, basically, along with direct primary care. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, that's been a, you know, and then some complex case management where if somebody's, but usually that falls into maybe oncology or cardio and you're working with that person and say, we have a great option here and we have a great option here. Or can we, you know, pharmacy was one. Pharmacy, pharma, our pharmacy curve was looking really badly. 
Um, so one of the first steps that I would recommend, and I learned this at Toyota and their methods, uh, but measure where you are. And oftentimes uh, brokers will have trouble with this. People get embarrassed. Like nobody wants to give you a graph that's really ugly to say like your costs have went up for like 9% right. or worse or 100%. I had one company call me and say, our costs went up 100% last year, Matt. Can you help? And this is just a neighboring company, <laughs> right? And I'm like, yeah, I'll help you. Uh, uh, but sometimes brokers or others, they don't want to show you that graph. One, nobody's measuring, first of all. Like, why aren't we measuring our second or third highest cost, first of all? We save a nickel on pens, but we won't measure $5 million in spend or $50 million in spend. Right. Come on, right? Employers, well, let's go. Um, so, um, but that's one of the first things you want to do. And I would say measure year to year. Here's another trick, because you'll get a graph and it says January, February, March, April, May, and then it's just bouncing around. And you say, what does that tell me? Like, I don't know. Not a whole lot. It tells me what I'm spending per month, but it doesn't tell me if I've gotten worse or better over the last five years. That's what I really want to know. And so somehow you have to make it safe because chances are if you haven't done initiatives yet, let me use the word yet, um, in healthcare, your your graph probably isn't going to be pretty, but, but that's okay. See, the Toyota method, right? Or my, when you discover a problem, that's good news because you can solve it. You can work on it. Don't hide yeah, it. Don't hide it under the covers. Yeah, right? I mean, it, yeah. it's like, I don't want to look. I'm sorry. Sometimes my credit card on my little app on my phone, it's like, I'm afraid to look. <laughs> right? right? I have six kids in the house and I'm afraid. To, but, but you have to look. You have to see where you are and make it safe for your broker and make it safe for everybody that works in your in, in within the healthcare in your company or whatever it may be and say you know what it's okay we just need to know how we're doing we don't suspect it's great but you know what the good news is we're going to start working on it so measure i would suggest year to year i would suggest five years back measuring things like total claims measuring things like total pharmacy spend specialty drugs have exploded yeah. um, measure fixed cost and interestingly when you start doing some initiatives in healthcare often your fixed costs go up uh, but that's with, uh, and that's okay. You got to manage them, but that's with the understanding that you're going to lower the variable costs. You're going to lower claims. You're going to lower pharmacy. And, and it's, if it's all visible, you can manage it. Um, but often we don't even know where we are. What, what's your annual spend? A lot of times the CFO will know that, but what's your annual spend? Um, but, but that graph, you know, like our pharmacy curve, it was going same with our healthcare curve up, 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 up. And then, okay, fun challenge. What can we do to turn that around? Because, um, you know, HR people, I don't know if there's human resources professionals on, on this uh, or employees alike. Employees, talk to them and, and help them. And we can give my email at the end. I mean, I'm one person, but I'm always glad to help. We, we run a best practice group locally. But you got to try. You know what you're getting when you don't try. And I always said, uh, first thing I say to uh, groups when I get in front of them, all right, we're going to talk about our enrollment and good news, the premiums aren't going up. I'll get that off, right? So that's the big question on your mind. Um, but I, I will tell them, you know what? I don't, I don't want to get in front of you and tell you that your costs went up 10, 20, 50, who knows what it is, right? Because that's just the way it is. And again, you can't control everything, but that's just the way that, the way it is. And, and, and it's, there goes your raise. I don't want. I don't want to do that. I'm going to work hard throughout the year to try to prevent that. I promise you, I'll try. I can't promise you, I'll be successful, but I promise you, I'll try. And they appreciate that. And uh, where they know their family members and their friends are getting in those same meetings and hearing really bad news. Um, so that was one thing I always promoted. And, and then I talked about shopping a lot. Right? Here's here's how we're going to do this. Uh, it seems like a no-brainer, but. Uh, uh, how many years did I sign? Now, I, I've been mostly self-insured, but how many years did I listen to a broker um, who probably had good intent or each each his own uh, or her own, but uh, employers, by the way, so because they, because I, I, about five, six years ago, I knew very little about healthcare, right? So that's one of the things is educate yourself. I read The Price We Pay, that woke me up and then look out from there. So if you haven't read that book by Marty, I believe his name's Macri, pronounced, I'm not sure, but He's Marty great. Macri um, is, read that book and that'll that'll shake your tree a little bit. Uh, but just kind of recognizing the things in healthcare and and what's happening and is a 
is the first one of the first steps. Yeah, and I think the first step is, like you say, I mean, shop. I mean, th there is op there are options out there, and that's why for so long, I think consumers have been taken advantage of is because they just didn't think there was an option. And I will say, speaking right. of books, I wrote a book about it, and um, being a guest on my show, you'll you'll get a copy of it, Matt. And it's called Sickened. How the government ruined healthcare and how to fix it. And you know, when you look at the history of healthcare, um, in fact, you know, um, many times we blame well, Medicare and Medicaid are the ones that really started this in the '60s when the government, federal government, started paying for healthcare services. But even worse than that, it's really what you and I are talking about: employer-sponsored healthcare. Mm -hmm. It was never a thing until the 1940s, right. when President FDR put a cap on wages and you know general motors and ford they were booming it was in during the war and they were booming making airplanes and tanks and all that but you know if they wanted to entice another employee to come to work for them they couldn't pay him any more than ford or or chrysler so if it was general motors and so they had to say well guess what we, we had this new program it's called hospital insurance mm -hmm. and if you go to the hospital you, or your kid goes to the hospital we'll pay for it and and like you said early on the show that started with good intentions right yeah animal but, farm right yeah but yeah. now you know um 70 years later what has healthcare become it's become a monster and partly why is because somebody else was paying the bill right. and largely employees did not really they didn't know how much it was really costing them but when companies like yourself say, look, this is your options now, and you either get a raise or you do this, um, that's really what has to happen. It's got to come from the bottom up. And one thing in my book, I have a six-step solution. That's what makes my book a little bit different is I actually try to solve the problem and, and give some ideas. And the first step is employees have to, or just consumers in general, they've got to be proactive in their own health period right and that includes financial so it needs to they they need to know what these things cost and um the financial piece of it is very important just like it is in any other industry yeah big time uh, i did read your book by the way because i actually i traveled back with a colleague crystal it was kind of and then oh that's I, right. I, I, got, I got in your drawing and she's like you're gonna find this really funny but you won. You won the drawing. So I did That's read right. your book. You did. You won my book. That's right. Congratulations. You a, yeah, thank you. And you did a great job of articulating that about, you know, having some skin in the game and just um, prosperity kind of leading to laziness a little bit, whatever word you want to choose, right? Where we just don't manage our money and don't manage our health. And um, and that's our responsibility. We don't like to take responsibility for things maybe today in our country, but that's still a, a core value. Keith, Keith Smith, one of the founders of the Surgery Center of Oklahoma, he says, you know, I haven't been to medical school. That's not my background, but uh, you know, I've seen Patch Adams, so this must be true. But one of the first things they teach in, in um, medical school is do no harm, right? I think that's fair. Uh, many yeah. still talk about that. He said, we have so we took an oath to do no uh, do no harm, but what good does it do to take care of someone physically if we bankrupt them financially? Right. That's that's doing harm. That's doing harm. So doctors not just care for the person's physical health, but their emotional health, spiritual health, mental health, financial health, whatever you want to plug in there. I think is really key. And um, human resources people, I um, I'm candid about that because I was one or impartially am one now. My role is a little different now, but um, you know, a lot of times I think they're they're told from their CEO or president, keep the peace, make people happy. Good luck with that one, um, right? No one can make anyone happy. But Not we, everybody. We, we can create environments maybe that are healthy, but um, uh, when we when you're talking about a nine percent national average for twenty plus years increase in healthcare, that's average. Many many worse, right? I've heard horrible stories. But just say that's the average, right? And no other industry has increased at that rate. If you could start a company and say you'll increase revenue nine percent a year, guaranteed, you'd smile and be like, For "Baby, train with this. biscuit right. wheels and chrome biscuit wheels." Well, that wouldn't taste very good, but um, right. So 
but that would be a dream, right? So and what's happened to employers plans is they've gotten just right. Remember these enrollment meetings I talked about that I don't want to go in and have tomatoes thrown at me, um, right? Just a little bit worse and a little bit worse and a little bit worse yeah. and a little bit. And so then 20 years later, you look up and your deductible is like eight grand, <laughs> right? And so that now, now I'm, if I'm not only am I paying a huge premium or contribution out of my check, which is already breaking me, I don't get health care until I pay what? Six, eight, ten thousand dollars. Now I don't. So that's called uh, functionally uninsured is one term or cat is it's really so the many of the health care or the, the benefit plan designs have turned into catastrophic plans. Right. So now I'm avoiding health care because I'm paying for it all. I'm paying for health care before I get health care out of my check. But so there, it just creates this kind of thing. So if you find yourself in, the, in that situation, I would say take it on as a fun challenge. You don't have to fix it all in one year. If you do some of the, the best practices, maybe you could at least freeze premiums for now. Maybe you could lower them. You can lower You know, as you start saving money, guess what? You can lower your deductible back down to where it should be or scrap it and go with co-pays or whatever it may be. But there are there are many success stories in the nation. I've met people from Oklahoma, from Indiana, from various places that have employers that certain individuals that are maybe a little bit entrepreneurial like myself uh, weren't afraid to jump in. You know, when we when we started our first on site clinic, I had dabbled in healthcare before a little bit like an on site NP NP or something like that. But I was working with one of the owners and uh, it ended up costing us 150 for remodeling, like an 1800 square foot clinic and another hundred for tables and blood and machines and, you know, desks and computers. But we so we were a quarter mil in in a company with 440 employees and about a thousand members quarter mil. And I'm I'm I had put is kind of funny because I didn't know a lot of what I know now. I'm like, OK, we're going to save on drug screens like. We're going to say, you know, we're funneling everything through it as, as possible, everything but hearing. We couldn't make it work. Um, but I'm like, I don't know, man, I could get fried on this one. This ought to be a good story a year later. Like, thanks a lot, Matt. Um, you know, we just threw a quarter million away. Well, guess how guess how long it took us to get that quarter mil back? Right? I think less than a year. Three months. Three, three months. You <laughs> so, saved $250,000. Yeah. And there's always that new effect. And, you know, it, that pace didn't continue. Well, yeah. it almost did because you talk about about a million bucks a year on a five million dollar spend. So it did really continue. So and then we implemented more things. You know, so we said we're on to something here. <laughs> right. We just spent a fortune, but we got it back really fast. And by the way, whenever the company saves, the employees save and families. Right. It's not a selfish thing. It's always shared 80, 20, 90, 10. Some are worse now, 70, 30. Right. But it's always a mutual gain. So I always wanted to make that point as well. And then we're like, we should do more. And that's where I started saying, wow, we're not talking 1,000 increments or 10,000. We're talking just like, it sounds like made up money kind of stories. I know. And, and really, the employer you're talking about, 440 employees, it, what, not a super huge employer, right? Really? No, not really. And, no. I mean, not compared, yeah, with some with uh, spends in the tens of millions. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, think about a company like you talked about Amazon earlier. Think about how many millions of dollars a month a company like Amazon can do simply by shopping for healthcare, like people shop for Amazon products. <laughs> yeah. Why not? You know, this it feels like it feels like just uh, there's like a sleep, uh, you know, this because I, had, I I didn't finish it. I should publish. I should send this out. But, uh, you know, so companies have their traditional HR departments, right? And they have their purchasing departments. But if, if healthcare is your biggest, is your second or third biggest spend, and it's one of the differentiators now in this staffing market that's unheard of, right? About keeping, attracting, and retaining talent. Why do a search on Indeed? It doesn't even pop up. Why aren't companies hiring a, a, level, a role like, what would you call it? Chief healthcare officer, CHCO not reporting to the head of HR, reporting directly to the CEO. Right. It's a, it's a, it's, it's kind of HR ish. At least it has been in the past, but do that search, do that search CHCO. Now you'll find reporting to the president or CEO. It doesn't exist. It should exist. 
because I had, I had talked to companies and like I could save you like I could save you like ten million dollars in like a couple of years. And it, so, it sounds like I'm just a salesperson, right? Like I'm smoking something, right. <laughs> but, but it's I could it, just by these simple practices. So why that role doesn't exist, I I don't know. I think it's like this blind spot in America. What an opportunity. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a really good point. And, you know, it could be a little bit that there's some people that don't want that. I mean, Premier Blue Cross, United Healthcare wants that position to exist. They don't want it. No, I mean, like I said, they're riding that train and yeah. with those fancy wheels. And and so they're not they're not motivated to change it. So that's that's one of the things is when I when I harp on employers, I mean this in a good way. In, unless you act, half of the payer of health, the other half's Medicare, half of the payments for healthcare in America, employers with employees, if we don't act, if we don't act, none of this will change. Don't expect, you know, the government may have to step in if the train crashes eventually, but then then you'll have, you'll wait nine months for an MRI instead of two days. And, you know, I, I am not a proponent of that. I don't believe the government can fix this. No, I mean, um, you know, like, like in my book, I say, I mean, the government ruined it, and the government already pays for majority of healthcare. So, right, they how can they fix it? I mean, they got to get out. That's the only way they can fix it. So it's up to us. It's up yeah. to us. And yeah. I say us as employers, employees, step in, and, and you know, you don't. We didn't do everything in the first year. We took one step, and then we took yeah. one step. And I and I think a lot of times, maybe I grew up. I had a. I was. I carry my shovel door to door when I was nine, and I'd come home with a wad of cash. And I had a baseball card business when I was ten. You know, so I'm a little entrepreneurial, and not everybody is, and that's fine. We all have our different likes and gifts, um, but uh, don't be afraid to try. I, I would tell prominent companies, people from prominent companies, like when I was first experimenting with SEO, people were saying. They won't drive two hours. They especially won't fly to Oklahoma for a hip replacement. Well, guess what? They did, and they yeah. did, and they did over and over. And, and you gave them a couple thousand, and you'd pay for their flight. And think about it. And we'd put them in first class, on, you know. But even then, a hip replacement going through an airport, that's a hassle. Uh, but they did. But what I what I found was these employers, they would they would come back, and they would say things like, that sounds great, Matt. And they requested a meeting, by the way. But that sounds great, Matt. When you get that going, could you give me a call? And you see what that you see what they're really saying. See what that translated is. Uh, if you don't fall on your face, Matt, could you yeah. give me a call? And we want to take all the risk. Yeah. Very skeptical. So, and and when I look at those things, I didn't see them as risky. It's like fifty thousand. Now, let's see if the person's happy and they and he or she had a good experience. I think in some ways, when you look at it, you know, like pricing of, of a surgery center of Oklahoma versus a local hospital, I think sometimes it sounds too good to be true. That's why you're kind of skeptical. I used to be. It's like, right. well, that, you know, and of course, hospitals, big hospital systems will, will hide behind, oh, well, if they're giving away that cheap, it's not good quality. And, you know, they'll always say that. And it's like, well, not always, but, you know, and that's just absolutely not true. You already explained right. how. You know, the surgeon that did your surgery, you know, took care of Olympic athletes. It's it's hard to fathom that you can spend less and get more. But when when a system's really broken, that is the case. It's just like yeah. lean manufacturing, right? When you're when you're doing a hundred steps and you could do that same task in forty eight steps, you save a bunch of time and money, and your job just got easier. So it's kind of a, a probably indirectly or informally, in a lot of cases, applied concepts of lean, which aren't just for manufacturing. Yeah, but efficiency right. concepts. Well, Matt, you have definitely realized our goal today of educating and empowering consumers to take charge of their own health. I appreciate you being on and sharing your, your experience and your stories. Uh, you've got a lot of wisdom that comes along with you. Um, so if anybody has any questions, um, how do they get a hold of you? Yeah, I'm glad to give out my, my email is uh, Matthew, M-A-T-T-O-H-R-T-7-3 uh, at gmail.com. So that'd be the way to reach me and, and um, glad to help if I can. I'm one person, but I usually find time to help. Awesome. I so appreciate it, Matt. It's been an honor to have you on. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much. I enjoyed it. All right, listeners and viewers, thank you for tuning in to Health Solutions with Sean and Janet Needham. Uh, tune in Monday, 1230 to 130. As always, we'll be streaming live on the Moses Lake Professional Pharmacy Facebook page and my personal Facebook page also. So tune in, 1230 to 130, uh, Pacific Standard Time. Monday. Thank you for listening.